We've talked about weapons, we've talked about gunsmith. Today we're rounding out the information that was dropped for us officially speaking about how our creative class systems will work in Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer. Later this week, we'll have the full launch of the game and in the next few days leading up to that, we're gonna be getting a few more blog posts about things like camos and progression, as well as zombies. But in the meantime, I wanted to run down the final bits of information that you need to know about the creative class system, including perks, field upgrades, streaks, and all. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. What part of what we discussed here are you most looking forward to, or maybe least looking forward to? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare 3. With the launch here, we're going to have a ton of stuff you won't want to miss. And we're chasing down that lofty goal of 550,000 subscribers by launch. So if you'd like to join the community and stay in the loop with all this, I'd love to have you. And finally, check out my friends over at G Fuel for 10% off your order with code Espresso to fuel your COD grind this season, whether it be weapon levels, camos, whatever the case. Now's a great time to stock up, but more on that a little later. For now, let's jump into the rest of the loadouts and the creative class system at hand. So let's start with the perk system, and atop that hierarchy of perks, the way that I view it, is the vests, a sort of perk system for the class overall, and the type of play that you want sort of set parameters almost for that build, not super limiting, but offering different ways that you can customize further in adding and subtracting areas of that creative class system. So vests, let's start out with those. Some of these you may recognize from the beta, some are new, like the infantry vest, that's gonna give you equipment slots of tacticals, lethals, and field upgrades, but gear slots of gloves, boots, and gear. Additionally, giving you the bonuses of increased tax sprint duration and reductions in that refresh time. And while duplicating effects do not stack, if equipped with running sneakers, the boots, you gain the effects of the lightweight boots. So again, you get to see how there's that overall shaping of the play style at hand. That infantry vest is one that we've known of though. The engineer vest though, you have two tactical equipments and a field upgrade with the lethal slot being removed. You also gain gloves, boots, and an additional gear slot for two gear perks. Now the perks of this vest fundamentally will counter equipment and explosives, spotting enemy equipment, field upgrades, and kill streaks through walls, and also aiming down sight at those things will highlight them for the team, as well as giving you faster field upgrade recharge times. The Gunner Vest will give you two primary weapons, a tactical, lethal, and field upgrade, with the base secondary weapon slot for your pistols, melees, or that RGL being removed in place of that secondary primary, but you also get gloves and a gear slot. The boot slot has been removed. This will also give you additional effects of max ammo, improved reload speed, and if equipped with a mag holster gear, it'll gain the effects of mission control comlink. The Demolition Vest will offer a tactical, two lethals, and a field upgrade, as well as gloves, boots, and gear, giving you the additional benefits of resupplying lethal and tactical equipment every 25 seconds as well. The CCT comms vest will give you a field upgrade with the tactical and lethal slots being removed, but will also give you gloves, boots, and two gear slots while giving you the additional benefits of increasing the duration of time that enemies will stay on the radar, zooming out that radar so you can end up seeing more of the minimap, as well as enemies will drop intel packs that you end up killing, which generate a radar ping for you, kind of acting like those UAV radios and DMZ off AI that you end up picking up. But if equipped with data jacker, you can gain the effect of the mission control comlink. So for players that love information of enemies and that sort of UAV effect, that's going to be one you might want to pay attention to. And then finally, the overkill vest gives you a tactical and lethal. The field upgrade slot is removed, but gives you gloves, boots, and gear, and the additional effects of increased weapon swap speed, the ability to reload while sprinting, and if equipped with the quick grip gloves or commando gloves, you gain the effects of the marksman gloves. So again, fundamentally, you see how these now kind of shape the overall decision-making process and how you want to end up creating that class for however playstyle you want to. Like if you're somebody that ends up wanting to jump into every single hard point, that engineer vest might actually be the best option for you. If you're somebody that chases those nukes and you want that information of where players are, they want that sort of extra bonus for the UAVs, counter UAVs, and advanced UAVs, the CCT comms vest is probably the best for you. If you're somebody that just wants to completely slay out, maybe that gunner vest of two primaries is for you. But but anyways, it sets up how you'll create that class even further, sometimes offering that fourth, maybe even fifth perk in some degree with the additional bonuses the vest themselves offer, plus however many gear slots you can end up getting. Gloves, boots, maybe upwards of two pieces of gear as well. That's where player customization can come into effect. Now, let's jump on over into your more traditional style perks in a rebranded sense of gloves, boots, and gear. For gloves, we end up having the quick grip gloves, which is your increased weapon swap speed. So kind of your fast hands with that, 
ordnance gloves where you can throw equipment further and reset that fuse time on thrown back grenades. The commando gloves will allow you to reload while sprinting. The scavenger gloves will allow you to resupply ammo and throwing knives from dead enemies. The marksman gloves will reduce sway and flinch while ADS. And the assault gloves while jumping will increase that accuracy as well as give you additional ADS improvements along the way. Your boots, you have the lightweight boots, which increase movement and swim speeds while reducing the noise while swimming. The climbing boots will allow you to have increased climbing and mantling speeds as well as reduces that fall damage. Running sneakers will allow that increased tack sprint duration and reduces the refresh time. The tactical pads will allow for increased sliding distance and allow for aiming down sights while sliding and increases the stance transition speeds and crouch movement speeds. The stalker boots will increase strafe and ADS movement speed, while the covert sneakers will eliminate footstep sounds. Then getting over into gear, your tack mask will reduce the strength of enemy flash, stun, and gas grenades. Mission control comm link reduces that kill streak by one, reducing the score streak as well by 125. The bone conduction headset reduces the combat noise, allowing for improved identification on enemy footsteps and gunshots. The new mag holster will improve your reload speed, so your sleight of hand perk at that point. The black light flashlight will show recent enemy footsteps, your tracker. The LR detector will warn of hostile laser and radiation sources. This had the high alert icon in the beta, so it seems like that's what it'll be comparable to. The threat detection system will, while ADS, automatically ping enemy locations in crosshairs. This is that sort of visibility and highlighting perk that it seems like, comparable to me, maybe with the Vanguard piercing vision perk, but not requiring damage to be dealt. Instead, just seeing them while they're ADS. The data jacker gear will allow enemies to drop a smartphone. Collecting those smartphones will generate that radar ping. Just as we mentioned, it's comparable to the AI walkie talkies and DMZ. This again, being part of that CCT comms vest, but individually paired out if you don't want that. The signal jammer will disrupt placed enemies, claymores and mines, as well as warn of nearby enemy equipment. The hijacked IFF strobe will be undetectable by AI targeting systems and thermal optics and is essentially your cold blooded. The ghost TV camo is again, while moving blocks detection by UAV, enemy radar sources and heartbeat sensors. And finally, EOD padding, as we've already seen, is reduction in damage from non kill streaks, explosive and fire. So a lot of stuff on deck here, a lot of new things, as well as a lot of returning things from the beta, but everything is paired out to the point where it actually does offer a lot of customization how you want to play. And with the potential again of a couple of bonus perks from whatever vest you have, plus maybe two additional gear slots in those four perks across gloves, boots, and gear. You have a lot of potential here to customize your play style how you see fit, which I am all for. Lethals and tacticals, we have 12 of these across multiplayer and zombies, some specific to modes here, but you end up having the frag grenade, claymore, throwing knife, thermite, thermo barrack grenade, proximity mine, drill charge, semtex, C4. In zombies only, we have a Molotov cocktail. You have a throwing star in multiplayer, and you have the breacher drone. So again, some of this stuff may seem familiar, some may be newer, but as for your tacticals, 12 of these again in multiplayer and in zombies, you end up having the stun grenade, battle rage, smoke grenade, scatter mine, decoy grenade, flash grenade, snapshot grenade, shock stick, stim, tear gas, and in zombies, the experimental gas grenade and the EMD grenade. Then moving over to your field upgrades, 18 of these in multiplayer only. You have the heartbeat sensor, the med box, the inflatable decoy, the comm scrambler, the tack insert, trophy system, System, munitions box, the ACS, that piece that can capture points for you if you want to throw it on like B flag or something like that. The tactical camera, the DDoS, the deployable cover, the recon drone, dead silence, a loadout drop, portable radar, smoke airdrop, suppression mine, anti-armor rounds. So a lot of things that are returning, some that are new. Honestly, I think one of my favorite changes here to this is the heartbeat sensor is now a field upgrade. It's not something that is just a tactical. And while they sort of nerfed it because it had the battery in Modern Warfare 2, and you didn't see it a whole ton in terms of Warzone use, in terms of even multiplayer use for Modern Warfare 2, I do like that we're kind of stepping away from that even further a little bit. Whereas in Modern Warfare 2019, in the original Warzone, well, it was kind of a crutch attachment at some points. Like it was actually a meta PC or loadouts for a time being in Warzone. So it's nice to see again, another step back here at that. Still useful, absolutely, but it'll be very situational as opposed to something that does have the potential to being not abused as much because again, Modern Warfare 2 took a step back. But anyways, you know where I'm going with that. And the final things we learned about in regards to our creative class come down to your streaks here. Whether kill streaks or score streaks depends on how you want to use it. Of course, you do have that toggle still persisting in Modern Warfare 3, but 
you have things like the UAV, the new Mosquito drone, which is a four kill streak or 500 score streak, which is that drone that will search out and dive bomb enemies. You have a new SAM turret for four kills or 500 score. You have the bomb drone, the Guardian SC, the care package, the counter UAV, the cluster mine, the precision airstrike, the cruise missile, a new remote turret for seven kills or 875 score, the mortar strike, the SAE, the juggernaut recon for eight kills or 1000 score, the Wilson, an overwatch helo, the VTOL jet, an emergency airdrop, a carpet bombing run, an advanced UAV, the chopper gunner, the gunship, and the regular juggernaut for 15 kills or 1,875 score. So you can take your pick here on what you want to use come launch, but that is the rest of create a class and our loadouts here fully explained and officially shown off. So a lot of stuff here that we're gearing up for come launch with this and honestly looking forward to it. Of course, as we mentioned, we do have more stuff coming in the next couple of days. I'm expecting maybe that camo and progression guide maybe tomorrow, maybe that zombies blog on Tuesday, and we're still awaiting a change log from beta to launch detailing the changes and patch notes for what we can expect come day one of modern warfare 3 here so that might be something that comes out on wednesday is my guess if they actually do give a dedicated blog post to that because thursday while maybe here in the states it's not necessarily out that is when the official global rollout starts for our time zone because new zealand and australia the first time zones to launch into the game officially midnight local time for them that's very early in the morning for pacific time east coast time even again into parts of Europe like the UK. So that kind of stuff. Thursday, I'm not really expecting anything official other than just the global rollout to start happening. So maybe we see a blog post one of the next couple of days leading up to Wednesday, but we still got a lot to cover, but that is going to round out our create a class system and everything you need to know about it. So that is, we're going to call it before we wrap everything up. Make sure you check my friends over at G Fuel to fuel your COD grind this season, whether you're grinding out weapons, camos, whatever the case, if you want to fuel those gaming sessions here, this launch G Fuel's got you covered and code espresso can you up to 30% off your entire order. Things like the Morbius Nectarine flavor, Hype Sauce, Strawberry Banana, Pink Drip, My Team Carnage just put out our exclusive flavor Pog Juice. I'd recommend all of those and more. So link in the description below if you guys want to check those out. Again, code Espresso can get you up to 30% off your entire order. Check it out if you'd like. For now though, that is what we're going to call it. So let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of the create a class and loadout system we have here for Modern Warfare 3? Like it, dislike it, whatever the case, feel free to let me know. If you enjoyed the video, you'll find it out on Insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel again make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing reading all of what we have upcoming in a very busy next couple of weeks here i would love to have you in the community but for now thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you later take care and peace